have flesh, okay? And it is blood that is running through your veins, not anointing oil. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those just meeting me, my name is Tolu Wanini, but you can call me Tolu for short. I'm a Nigerian Christian YouTuber and presently a doctor in training. To all my returning subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about something really interesting, something I really love to talk about. We're going to be talking about sex. Okay, not exactly sex. We're going to be talking about how to stay sexually pure in a relationship. So you feel like God has brought you out of this season of singleness where you are allowed, you know, to be in a relationship with a person and you, you are in a relationship with this amazing guy or this amazing girl. The question comes, how do you stay sexually pure in this relationship? How do you still honor God in this relationship with all the feelings flying in the air and all of that and her hair, her hair is flying there, her hair is flying there. And all of that kind of stuff how do you stay sexually pure in that relationship oftentimes when you ask people these questions they tell you to pray now prayer is very important but you've got to back it up with action so we are going to be talking about the action today the action go go that's what we're going to be discussing today we're getting practical and I'm going to be sharing five keys with you five keys to stay sexually pure in a relationship but before we get down into it I have a question for you guys the question for the day is what is your take on kissing in a godly relationship i really love to hear from you guys i really love to you know hear opinions you know and you know interact with you guys in the comment section so please comment what what's your take is it a yay or is it a nay would you kiss in your relationship before marriage i mean is that proper is it not proper and don't just tell me yay or nay let me know why why do you say or why do you think that kissing is proper or not proper all right let's dive right into today's video so what are the keys to staying sexually pure in a relationship one create intentional boundaries now don't just assume that because both of you are christians there's just going to be that unspoken rule between you guys that we wouldn't be having sex no you have to discuss and have an open conversation with your partner to ensure that first of all they are on the same page with you and next to decide what lines you guys are not going to be crossing okay so don't assume that just because this person is a christian he believes that he shouldn't have sex before marriage he or she believes that he or she wouldn't or shouldn't have sex before marriage don't make such assumptions first of all if you're in an unequally yoked relationship that is you're in a relationship with the person that's not in the faith then maybe we shouldn't even be having a conversation about how to stay pure we should we should be having a conversation about if you should be in that relationship or not but that's for another day so you're in a relationship with this guy or this girl don't just assume. Have a conversation. You guys need to decide what principles you're going to be upholding in your relationship. What lines are you guys not willing to cross in your relationship? As you go through the journey, what lines are you guys not going to cross? For certain people, it could be, you know what, we're not going to be kissing in this relationship. For other people, it could be, I'm not going to be visiting you alone. I must always go with somebody. Whatever the situation is, it's peculiar to you guys. You guys know yourselves, you know your personality, you know what turns you on you know what triggers you you know all these things so have an open conversation with your partner decide what are we going to be doing in this relationship and what are we not going to be doing in this relationship to ensure that this person is even on the same page with you so don't just assume that just because you two are Christians that somehow magically these things will just settle themselves because you know what bro sees congeno de sabi spirituality to be accountable there should be people who know about you guys relationship and by that i don't mean that you need to put your relationship on social media if you don't want if you don't want to go public you don't want the world to know that's fine but there should be one or two people who you guys are accountable to there should be that mommy that daddy that pastor that friend that could call you guys at any point in time and be like bro sis hope you guys are still honoring god in this relationship there should be that one person you can always run to when feelings are you know and hormones are and you need to rush and tell somebody and you know get some guidance and seek help if you are hiding your relationship something is wrong because evil thrives in darkness bring it to the light so you don't have to tell everybody but there should be one or two people who know about it and who you guys are accountable to three ask yourself always what would christ do so in every situation in every circumstance when you're trying to make a decision as to whether you should or should not do certain things ask yourself what would christ do for instance 
your love language, your partner, your, you guys' love language could be touch. It could be that every time you touch her, you know that she reacts in some way. And then you're together one day and feelings are flying, her hair is going like this and going like that and things are happening and the, the emotions are rising and the blood is hot and the spiritual brother is, you know, canal. And you're like, I just want to touch her. I just want to touch her. But you know that touching her triggers something in her that's not exactly healthy, you know, for that moment. So ask yourself, what would Christ do? Would Christ touch her? Would Christ go ahead to trigger her, to, co to cause those triggers in her? So don't be selfish in your relationship. Always put Christ first. Always ask yourself, what would Christ do? Think of the other person. That's how Christ would act. Christ's love wasn't selfish. Christ was selfless. So think of your partner. Think of how the other person would feel. Think of how the other person would react. Don't just think about your emotions. Don't just think about your body. Don't just think about your hormones. Don't just think about your own satisfaction or your, or your own gratification. Think of the other partner. And ask yourself always, what would Christ do? Four. Don't create an environment for sin. Don't tempt yourselves. Don't put yourself in that position where you too can actually commit the sin. The Bible says, let him that thinks that he stands, let him take heed lest he falls. So don't ever think that it's just a small opportunity. It's just, it's just one thing. It is not a big deal. The devil only needs a small opportunity. Small, kekere, like this, tiny tiny opportunity to invade and to get things done the devil doesn't need so much so don't just tell yourself it's just one kiss it's just one night it's just one hug it's not a big deal don't do that to yourself if you've made a certain decision you know when you were creating boundaries with your partner that we wouldn't be doing this you know then don't just tell yourself it's just one day if you decided for instance that we're not going to be hugging each other intimately we're going to be doing church hug like church hog, right? If you've decided you're not, that that's how it's going to be, then don't tell yourself one day that, you know what, I could just give you an intimate hug. It's just one day. The devil only needs one day. The devil doesn't need too much. So don't create an environment for sin. Don't make yourselves feel that you are too good to do certain things. Because my brother, when feelings enter this thing, it, it is, the thing is one kind. The thing is one kind. If you know, you know. Five. Don't be afraid to say no to whatever makes you uncomfortable. By that, I mean be honest with yourselves. Be honest. Be honest. Tell yourself the truth. So it's okay to tell your partner, you know, he calls you up or she calls you up and, and he or she's like, um, I want to visit you. I, 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 I'm in town. I'd like to come over. It's okay to say, I don't think you should visit me right now because right now I feel totally vulnerable. It's okay to do that. Be able to speak up and say no. Be able to say that I'm not comfortable with you touching me that way. I'm not comfortable with you saying these kind of things, you know, to me. Be honest with yourselves. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. It doesn't make you less spiritual to admit that being touched in a particular way turns you on. It doesn't make you less spiritual. It does not reduce your spirituality or your kabashin or any of that kind of stuff. You are flesh. You have flesh, rather. You are. You have flesh okay and it is blood that is running through your veins not anointing oil so don't think that it is not okay for somebody to, or for you to tell your partner that ah you can't touch me like that brother you can't you can't touch me like that sister this thing they make me do one kind it is fine be comfortable be, with telling this person that this thing doesn't make me comfortable or this thing hurts me in this way or this thing triggers this in me be honest about these things you know, when people have this kind of conversations, like I said earlier, we'll say things like, you guys should pray more together. The more you pray with each other, you know, the less likely you are to want to sin. It's not like prayer is not good. But I want you to note this thing that I'm about to say and never forget it. Never forget this. Even a good environment can become a platform for sin. Even a good environment can be can become a platform for sin so just because you're doing something healthy and something christian and something spiritual does not mean that it cannot suddenly become a platform for sin if you are not careful if not managed properly i'll give you an example if you two are praying together but you guys always pray in probably one person's house in the middle of the night you guys pray together in love by 12 midnight so you fix 12 midnight of all times in the day of all times 12 midnight to pray with somebody that you are in love with 
somebody you hope to probably spend the rest of your life with, somebody you are sexually attracted to, somebody you are physically attracted to, fine boy, like fine boy, fine girl like this that gather everything. You fix 12 midnight to pray with that brother and that sister alone without anybody just two of you prayer is a good thing right praying together is a good thing right but that environment in a twinkle of an eye in a blink can become toxic that environment can suddenly turn to a platform for sin so don't think that just because you are doing the right things it can't suddenly become sin it can't suddenly change be on guard be on guard okay so these are five keys they're probably more but these are five keys that was just laid on my heart to share with you you know for everybody in a relationship or hoping to get into a relationship you know to, to stay sexually pure now about kissing I asked you guys to let me know what you think so I'm going to be sharing my opinion on that like what I think about kissing in a relationship in a godly relationship my friend described kissing in a way that I was I'm, I would like to describe to you so it's like somebody delivers Christmas gifts to you before Christmas and tells you you are only allowed to open it on Christmas Day. This is your Christmas gift, but you are only allowed to open it on Christmas Day. And then you now tell yourself, hey, let me just peep inside. Let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just do like this and check what is inside it. So you do that and you realize that what is inside that thing is likely to be sweet. You've not tasted it. You've not, you've not, you've not touched it yet. But you have taken, you have peeped into it. That's, to, in my opinion, that's what kissing is like. So I feel like if you can avoid it, maybe you should. However, that's my opinion. That's not like, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Lord says. Thus said the Lord. No, it is just, it is strictly my opinion, okay? So whatever works for you in the confines of Christianity, whatever works for you, within the borders that Christ has created, go ahead and do it. But that's my opinion on kissing. I feel like it is it can become an environment for sin. But still, I'd love to know your opinion, what you think about kissing, you know. So let me know in the comment section. I read all my comments and I try as much as possible to respond to all of them. So I'll be interacting with you beyond this, beyond this conversation. Let me know in the comment section what you think about kissing in a relationship so if you enjoyed this video please remember to give me a like because liking my video makes me know that i'm offering value and i'm doing something that you guys really like so please encourage me by liking and share the video and of course if you haven't subscribed already consider subscribing it's free I hope you've been blessed by watching this video you guys it's been an awesome time creating this particular content because like i said i really love to talk about sex okay so until i come your way next time this is bye bye bye